So the first material I think I'd like to work with is going to be the wine bottle material. To get myself in a position to work with that a little bit better, I'm going to drag down a window right here, which I will make a shader editor. So clicking up here, I can turn that into a shader editor. And if you are familiar enough with Blender, or you do something enough times, such as myself, you would know that the hotkey is S. So when I need to make a window a shader editor, I just, you know, say this was in the 3D viewport, I just boom, S. And you can see S is underlined there. So that's a, that exists like a lot of places in Blender um, where you see a little underlined letter. That's once the menu is open, if you press the hotkey, it'll switch to it. Small little tip there, but don't want to leave any tips off the table. Tip of the table, tip off the table. So we're going to do the bottom material. Now, right now, if you recall, it is just black with low roughness. Uh, I'm going to keep the roughness low, but I want it to be not black. I want it to be like a clear material. So to do that, I'm going to turn the transmission value all the way up. And now it is transmissive. And now I just want to check here. Light pass, performance, color management. Oh, for color management, it's not a bad idea to change this from um, no look to high contrast, for example. A lot of people don't like that, but I just, I'm, there's not like a single render I do around not boosting the contrast a little bit. Um, I am a restrained man though. It's rare that I use very high contrast. Uh, I think if you were like a real live professional, Spoiler alert, I'm not, I'm just kidding. I am a professional. Um, I think if you were fancy or you, you cared more about this type of thing, you might do none and then leave it to your, you know, somebody you hire to manage the colors. But I just, I'm always boosting it. Why not have it come straight out and right how I like it with some high contrast. So bump that up. But I was looking for somewhere down here. Oh yeah, caustics. I don't know if that would have been on by default or not, but I think you want those. Uh, I think my scene is set up relatively default, but it could by chance have been automatically on for me, but make sure that's on. And uh, yeah. So now if I'm rendering something that's just clear, I would not want this huge light. And what that is, is that this point lamp behind it, you can see if we move that over, it goes away, but it is creating that rim for me as well, and we're not actually not going to see it. Um, but in the light settings, you can turn off this multiple importance, which will still, you can see the light is still coming from behind, but it uses multiple importance sampling for the light, which reduces noise for area lights and sharp glossy materials, as the tooltip says. That's all I'm making a tutorial, is just reading the tooltips. Turn it on, turn it off multiple ports. Uh, I was tempted to turn it off because I didn't want that huge thing, but it gets rid of my highlight on the edge, which I need. So I'm leaving it on. And once we actually add the wine in, you'll notice that um, the effect is not nearly as severe. So we will be doing a small amount of uh, more modeling to model the wine. Um, but yes, so when you add a new material, the base color typically is not fully white. If you want it to be a very clear bottle, you would want to turn this up to pure white. F, 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 one, 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 everything up white, super white. Uh, and that's a nice clear bottle, which if you were doing a bottle of rosé or something like that, you might want to leave that clear. But for me, I want the bottle to be green. So up to your preference and your reference. Wow, that was good. But, you know, what color is a wine bottle? You know, just find a green like that. Now, a little bit of saturation and a little bit of value goes a very long way when it comes to transparent materials. So um, I will turn this value down very slightly. And, you know, I'll turn the, I think I'll turn the saturation down too. Maybe the saturation is really more what I want to turn down. Just, you know, go grab a wine bottle off the, the street and see what it looks like. Then come back for part two. I'm just kidding. Um, so we're just going to kind of tweak this. Now, I do like to do it with the wine bottle empty just because, you know, that's maybe a, a familiar thing maybe you've seen before. Like me last night. I saw 
an empty wine bottle. Started off empty, that's all that happened. Um, so I'm just gonna get, you know, the higher the value, the more like clear it will be. Um, so yeah, just kind of get this We're looking. I want to say names of beers that come in bottles that color, but you know, who knows what the copyright strikes these days. So I think that looks good. Something like that, kind of a pale green. And for those of you who just have to know, the hex code is six, three, seven, eight, five, six. And, um, now I'm going to tweak it just a little bit so that it's different. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just torturing you. Um, okay. So we got the wine bottle there. It looks good. Let's make the wine that goes in the wine bottle. So what I'm going to do is press shift D on the bottle object. And now we have another bottle object with no label and no foil. So for that object, what I want to do is create the wine, which is basically the inside. And we're going to use a similar technique we did earlier um, to kind of clean that area up to create um, you know, just the wine. So the wine would maybe go up to there and we can change this later, but let's delete this ring of vertices. So now we've separated that. So this is essentially that, that would be the wine that's inside of the bottle we're looking at. You can see that separation there. Um, and then we need to similarly on the bottom or just anywhere, I think, well, let's see if we press L. Oh no, I think since that was all one surface, technically, if we just press L here, it should select the whole outer piece. So by deleting one edge loop, we basically split the inside and the outside. So now I can delete all these vertices. And now we have just our, um, just our wine it's entered. Oh, but we've got all those things on the bottom. Let's, um, let's press the way I'm going to get those again, selection tips. I'm going to press L to select the wine and then control I to invert my selection, which is going to get all those. So X vertices, boom, looking good. Okay. So now that that is the innards. So what we need to do is just select this ring. And is this high enough? I think I want it to sit right below the foil. And you know, maybe my foil is just a little bit high. I want to press G twice to edge slide it up a little bit. And then I'm going to zoom in and just make sure that's in the right place. Okay. So edited the, eh, is that too short now? I don't know. It looks fine. So let's, um, so we can just, you know, if you had to add edge ring, you could, but I think right there is going to be a good spot for the top of the wine. Press F to fill that in. And then um, since we duplicated from that object, it has the subdivision, which I want to leave on. I want those all to match up. If you've got different levels of subdivision on the bottle and the wine inside it, uh, you could run into some issues. The easiest way to avoid that is to just apply the subdivision, but I'd like to leave it on. Um, so what I'm going to do is just uh, with that edge selected, I can turn this crease option on, which is going to remove the subdividedness. Um, and then now for this object, which I don't think I had it on before, oh, not edge length. I'm going to turn on auto smooth. Yeah. And that will uh, sharpen that. So crease will, um, if you have use creases enabled, which is, this is in the advanced part of the subdivision modifier. Um, you'll see that there's that use crease option. So uh, what a crease is going to do is tell, uh, it's just a specific place where it's like, don't subdivide here. You, you can control the crease, but um, I want it all the way to one. So just absolutely no crease because that's just flat. It needs to be the top. Um, but I still do want the subdivision on because that's what's smoothing out the rest of the thing. So let's, um, let's go ahead and set up the material for the wine. Now, since the wine is also clear, also relatively shiny, I'm just going to uh, press this plus sign here to create a new material, which when you do it in this field, or if you did it right here, will create a, uh, a duplicate that has the same uh, data. So add a new material. It's going to be called bottle 001, which I will name wine. And for that, uh, we can pretty much leave all the settings the same. We just need to change the um, color to whatever color you want. So I'm going to be changing it to a red wine. Syrah, something like that looks fine. Maybe you want to spin it around the other way and be a 
more purple because like grapes are purple. I guess technically the color would be more purpley. Now for this, uh, we'll turn the saturation all the way up. I think it's gonna look good. And then the value will bring down a little bit. You just kind of have to imagine what <laughs> a thing of wine would look floating midair. I think it would be a little bit darker. I guess if you've seen wine in like a carafe or something like that, or something larger, you'd have a good, good guess. But yeah, something like that. Of course, you know, make this whatever freaking color you want. You want blue wine? Have at it. It's all you. So I think this looks fine. I'm just going to tab into edit mode and then press shift N. Okay, yeah, that did something. Recalculate normals. So because this was duplicated from another object and then I was messing with things a little bit, um, the normals looked a little bit funny. And I could tell that just because of the reflections were a little bit off. They seemed not quite right. So never a bad idea, especially on transparent objects to uh, tab into edit mode, select them all, and then press shift N to recalculate the normals. So that's looking a little bit better. And now maybe I will turn this value down just a little bit more. Uh, so I think that looks that looks fine. We can always adjust it later. So GX, and then since I had held control earlier, we know that that's gonna snap right back into place. Now, if I look here, zoom in, we've got a classic problem when you're creating liquid inside a bottle, which is that since we made it from the same geometry, it is overlapping. So they're like exactly on top of each other, which creates, um, you know, basically zero thickness geometry or like doubles basically. So it creates this horrible looking pattern. Um, and the fastest, easiest way to remove that is just to scale your inner object ever so slightly. Um, if you do it inwards, you get a little bit of a different look than if you do outwards, I think outward looks better. So if we scale in, you can see that the glitchiness has gone away and it looks like that. But if we scale it out just a little bit, it looks like that. What's the difference? Who knows? So yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm pressing S and then just hold shift so that it's very small drag. I'm like pointing at the top of my screen as I always do, but in the top left of the window I'm currently in, um, you can see the scale. You just want that to be like just anything more than exactly what it is, just barely over there. And now I always tell you to do this in edit mode, but in this case, um, I'll leave it in object mode so that if I, for whatever reason, need to get that exactly back where it was, I can just set that back to one. So that's good. We don't have those issues anymore. You can see a very slight tinge of red through here, which is I think kind of what I want. And, uh, and we're not having that issue with the multiple importance anymore. You can see now even better that when that's unchecked, um, we lose those nice highlights on the edge that I would very much like to have. It just adds a little bit of, it's a little bit easier to see through right there. And maybe that's where you could go in and adjust your bottle color even more, which for the perfectionists, there's the hex code. You can check it real quick. There it is. Five, three, six, four, four, eight. You can copy me exactly if you wish. So that's looking good for the bottle. Let's do, let's do the foil texture. It should be pretty easy. Let's do a new material, name that foil, and we'll make that metallic. But um ching. Now it's metal. So metal, bro. No one still has watched my metal material tutorials. I put so much time into those. So you can choose what you want here. Uh, I think realistically, let's go ahead and pick a color so we can see this a little bit better. Uh, we're gonna go for a little bit of a dirk, dirk red which I was trying to tell you, it's red, it's not orange, it's red, dark red. Why is this, this is looking too thin. Does that need to come out more? I feel like I want a little bit more of a thickness there. Should we bump that up a tad? Should we bump that up a tad? Let's just add a little, a little, there, I'm happier now, okay. So that looks good. Uh, I think it needs to be, oh, man, this is really, I'm not looking at a reference right now. I'm not looking at a reference. Famous last words. I think that looks pretty good. We'll leave it at that. Adjust it as you please. I may adjust it later. Don't get mad at me. So this is looking, I mean, 
I don't know where you started. Maybe you followed the donut tutorial and now you got a fine bottle of wine in front of you, but um, it's, it's really coming together, I would say. 